Guys, what's going on, man? Welcome back to another IGTV, man. It's a wonderful a Sunday morning out here, man. We're just shy of June. And you know what, boy? I got one of those comments. You know what I mean? I'm telling you, boy, I love it living out here in Thailand. So, guys, you guys want to know the situation. I'm going to tell you the situation. Now, of course, you guys see the title, Racism in Thailand. Guys, I've been dealing with this for a long time. But you know what? I'm going to give vast credit first to the coach that I actually... um that I associate, you know, well, she's like a sociologist. She does everything. Her name is Isabel Hunt. I brought her on before, as a matter of fact. So if you guys are looking at this on YouTube, scroll down. It's called the Enlightenment Series. She's episode number one. She is remarkable. And so we always talk about limited beliefs and a couple of other things. And what happens in society? Is it a direct reflection of what you are feeling in the inside? So there it was. Here we go. Um, I got, uh, you know, this racial, you know, uh, racial comment thrown at me. She's like, I hate and she I'm a, I'm a quote her paraphrase just a little bit. But she said, I hate black shit guys like you. And I'm like, wow, that's interesting. And you know what, guys, to be honest with you, if you guys say, OK, Arsenia, what was the last time someone said something derogatory to you like that? Um, two years ago, two years ago. And it was um, some, uh, oh, I, I don't even remember, to be honest with you. It was like around, I don't know, August of 2017. But again, a lot of these women, are they, are they smart women? Are they women that have great jobs? No. They're kind of, I'm going to say it in, in a very, very disrespectful way. They're kind of the bottom of the barrel, meaning their jobs are probably the worst jobs in Thailand. What do you, what do I mean by the worst jobs in Thailand? Well, they probably have sex for money. So if you, if we look at the majority of these women who have actually said really nasty things to me, are they people of education or, you know, are they educated? No. And so limiting that and just breaking that down, ah, of course, I had to do some breaking down over the last X amount of years. But this comment right here, I'm like, yes, it's been such a long time. It's been such a long time since I've had something like that happen to me. So I love the reaction I had because if we look at the reaction I had four years ago when I had the first nasty comment from an individual and she was like, oh, uh, black man, low class, pimp. It really hit me hard. I was very angry. But that was like four years ago. Two years ago, I had that same reaction. And but now this time and there was no way I could respond to it. Right. Uh, but at the same token, and when she said that, I actually posted it and I wanted to see my reaction in the post. I had no feelings of anger whatsoever because she wasn't talking about me. She was talking about her past experiences with, let's just say, black men. Now, if you look at my skin tone, am I black? No, my hair is black. So therefore, I already say, OK, well, I'm not black. So who are you talking to? So we have to dig deeper into why she actually said that. It had nothing to do with me. She was generalizing in terms of what has happened in her life. Now, her being in, let's just say, one of the worst provinces in maybe Asia, it's called Patea. It's a disgusting, heinous place. Let's just put it that way. And this is where, let's say, I'd have to say about 65% of the women are prostitutes. Um, and it's a place where there are a lot of drugs, mafia of all kinds, okay, including, blah, 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 I won't even get into that. But let's just, let's just say she probably had a run-in with a lot of people uh, who are part of a gang, a part of a mafia out there, and they just so happen to be people of color. So now let's look at it. Okay, all right, so she's angry. Okay, she's under the perception, under the belief that all black, let's just say black people, whatever that means, uh, they are bad people. And so then we have to dig even deeper. Okay, so what were her influences? What did her mother teach her? What did her father teach her? What happened all the way down? What was it that the media and the garbage television out here, and of course television worldwide is all trash, um, what did it teach her and how did it teach her to hate a specific group of people? It's like America, right? If we look at America, most, I'm going to have to say about 60% of Anglo-Americans hate Muslim people. Why? Because they truly believe 18 years ago that Muslim people were the bane of all existence when September 11th happened. So then, basically, what had happened and transpired on that day, going forward for the next two, three years, it taught people in America to hate a specific religion. But you know what? One of the greatest people and one of the greatest Thai people I've ever met in my life, it was a Muslim teacher in the south of Thailand. One of the most gorgeous souls I've ever met in my life. So then, remember, I told you about that reaction. 
So now we're talking about racism in general. Yes, we talked about the girl who has a, a, a monolithic perception of what life is not. And, of course, a guy who's um, a very funny guy by the name of Dave. He said, boy, it sounds like that woman needs her oxygen removed. <laughs> I, I laughed so much. I was like, no, no, she just needs oxygen. She's probably breathe, breathing air of toxicity and pollution and, and tungsten. Who knows what she's breathing out there in one of the most polluted and nastiest provinces in all of the free world. But let's, let's get back to focusing. I completely lost my thought because I was talking about something and then I switched it and I can't go back. But you know what? Let's just put it this way, guys. Over all the things and the things that I've gone through in my life out here, my reaction was like, man, this right here, oh man, I love it. I've missed it so much because this is what has fueled me. Do you understand? Thai women, yes, Thai women, they're the ones that have said that I am not good enough because the color of my skin. These schools out here in Thailand, they do not hire color teachers, people of color whatsoever. What's wrong with my hair? Oh my goodness. Anyways, let's get back to, oh my hair, oh my God, it's getting annoying again. Anyways, they do not hire people of color. If you go to any of these international schools, do you see people of color out there? Absolutely not. Why? Because of course the head teachers or whatever would say, oh, they would scare the children. It's happening in Korea, it's happening in China, and of course it's happening in Japan. Guys, all I'm trying to say is, this is what fuels the success of color people like me. You know, one of my students just recently, um, she said, you know what, I watched that movie Green Book, if I'm actually, sit I'm probably completely off, but, oh my God, I can't say his first name, but he was in the movie Moonlight, and then there was another actor that I really don't know about, but people were talking about, oh, he's such a good actor, I'm like, who is he? But anyways, it was about, of course, you know, the transgressions and the things of, you know, being a guy of power, an African-American who could play the piano, who speaks of eloquence, but is still treated as a fifth class citizen, of course, during the nastiest times in American history, which are resurfacing because of movements that are happening out there right now. But anyways, she told me she saw that and she told me about the quote and I was amazed because this is a Thai girl that actually has a fantastic job. Um... And she was like, if I'm not black enough and I'm not white enough, then tell me what I am. That's what the guy quoted. Of course, I'm paraphrasing just a little bit. And so it happens out there, of course, in America. I'm not black enough because I'm too educated. I'm not black enough because I don't smoke weed. I'm not black enough because I don't wear, of course, pants down to the crack of my ass. I'm not black enough because I don't own a pair of Jordans. I'm not black enough because I don't speak in slang tone. Here in, of course, Asia. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna say Asia, except Singapore. Excluding Singapore, Singapore is fantastic. Malaysia, I really don't know, but I've actually been treated as a really good, uh, as a citizen out there too. So we're just gonna do. We're gonna take Malaysia, put them aside. Take Singapore, put them aside. But the rest of Asia, we treat it as a fifth class citizen. Some countries, of course, seventh class, tenth class, but. Where do they develop that perception? See guys, dealing with racism, racism in Thailand, racism in Asia. Guys, you can't take it personally. You have to first question it and say, oh, that, lady, that lady right there, she gave me a dirty look. But why did she give me a dirty look? What was she taught? What did her parents fuck up on? What did her country fuck up on? What did everyone in her country fuck up on? What does the scholastic in the school system, what have they done wrong? See, we have to ask the right, the better questions. It's not so much about the individual. It's what the individual was fed for X amount of years. See, guys, this is what it is. So, yes, being from America and seeing the civil rights movement and, of course, seeing what's happening today, it all makes sense. Everything's resurfacing. And with, of course, social media and how great it is and how great technology is, it's making us face the problems head on right now. So, yes, China, Japan, Korea, all of Asia, they're being exposed right now. They're actually showing signs of what, of course, America has shown over the last 300 years. So guys, it's time to battle it. It's time to hit it head on, but never take it so personal. Am I black? No, I'm American with about seven different types of heritages. I'm a man of power. I'm a man of influence. I'm a man of motivation and I cannot be stopped. That right there is the best. I love that so much more. Of course, I love positivity. You got it. Life is binary, guys. You got to take both sides. But you know what? You're either going to let it keep you in the cement or you're going to let it influence you and influence millions of others around the world. 
I'm your host, Arsenio, over and out.